Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to, I guess you could say, the first official episode of this podcast, if you will, an idea that me and my special guest for this episode um, pretty much came up with, Xavier Rodriguez, say what's up. What's up? And this is pretty much going to be called JCWA Unauthorized. It's going to be a podcast to really, um, you know, for people that are, you know, whether you're coming into the JCWA, maybe, you know, you want to find out information about it. You know, maybe you've been here for a minute and you, you know, of course, don't know every single little thing and may want to, you know, know some fun facts or anything like that. That's pretty much what this is for. It's it's information based driven i guess you could say is something you know so people can learn more about jcwa why we do it what it is what it entails um the kind of mindset i have uh etc etc the topic i wanted to talk about in this episode would be about you know uh tips and you know somewhat of a guideline to new recruits and you know brand new people that come in and you know, or you know, may may be confused or not sure what they have to do or what is required of them or what is expected of them. You know, I, I know a lot of people. Um, you know, they they get nervous when you know. I guess it's put up or shut up time in terms of you know having somebody that's real interested and then you know the day comes up and they kind of get the butterflies and they kind of get the nerves and. You know, this is also for you guys to kind of learn uh, the process. Now, before I go a little bit more into it, you know, Xavier, you've been with the JCWA since its first year, which was 2013. You debuted, and pretty much the biggest event we had, still to this day, hasn't been matched in JCWA by anything else. JCWA Showdown 2013, you competed in Jonathan Rojas's uh, Newcomers Battle Royal, um, was one of the last uh, three, I believe, and, and, you know, what? how did you feel about things... Heading into the JCWA in your debut at that time versus how do you feel about things in JCWA now? Well, how did I feel going into that match? It was simple. Like, it was a wrestling match. But as for, like, promos and stuff, I wasn't comfortable with that at first because I was scared of being in front of camera and actually speaking. But once you get used to it, it's easy. Like now, season four, after Hallway Havoc, I'm comfortable, like in my character and everything. Because here, you get to control your character how you want to portray it. They don't tell you, oh, this is your gimmick or whatnot. You make your own gimmick. Exactly. Yeah, you're right about that. And and I feel that it's more natural that way. Like, I understand why, you know, I guess you could say other feds or something like that. Um, put you where they feel you need to be. Me, personally, I feel that sometimes when you have somebody coming in or even somebody seasoned, you don't really know um, where to put them in or they might kind of know deep down inside, um, you know, what kind of character they can be and what they can offer. So usually I try to tell people, you know, for the most part, they can have, like, little gimmicky things and stuff that's a little exaggerated. But for the most part, they should be themselves and be kind of like, a, I guess you could say, an over-exaggerated version of themselves or kind of like a, a warped version of themselves. You know, I don't, I don't like to really give people, like, gimmicks and, you know, oh, you're going to be the... The cowboy, you're gonna be the this character, and you're gonna dance on your way to the you know wherever, and you're gonna do this and that. No, I, I'd rather it be natural. It it be something that comes from you and your character being an extension of you. Um, you know, the biggest thing I wanted to say in terms of tips for new people coming in is, you know, don't don't put so much pressure on yourself coming in. I know a lot of people that consider this and don't end up doing it is because they feel that, you know, they're going to be judged or that they're not that good or, you know, they're going to come in and do a bad job and, you know, we're going to get all angry about it. And that's really not the case. You know, JCWA, even though, you know, 
we have um, wrestling to, I guess you could say, um, um, you know, carry the storylines and the feuds and move things along. You know, anybody that's really been here for a while knows that, you know, wrestling is not, um, like, it's not trying to be, like, this crazy real wrestling promotion, you know? So you, you don't have to be, you know, perfect and, you know, do everything, like, amazing before your debut or anything like that. That's okay. The, the big reason for JCWA is to help people. Another reason is, you know, people find it fun. They find it interesting. But, you know, I, we also use it as a way to make people better, um, you know, when it's time for the feature films to come up or whatever the case, sometimes we'll actually take people from the JCWA that was doing good, you know, and put them in roles like that, that's another reason we do it, and, you know, if you're someone that comes in and you're not that great, it's fine, a lot of people that first started with us didn't start off that great, but the whole point is you keep doing it, and you learn and you get better. If you're really serious about it, and this is something um, that you see yourself doing. You know, I, I know things, uh, you know, come up. Some people can't stay as long as they want to. But overall, you know, if, if this is something that you feel you want to do, like, go all in or don't go at all. You know, like, really do it or don't do it at all. You know, and it doesn't mean you have to show up for every little thing or every episode and every this and every that and we're going to need you four or five times a week and things it's it's really not the case we're very um part-time i guess you could say in terms of how often we um shoot you know and do episodes and things like that it's really not that often so even though i say make a commitment you know it's not that hard of a commitment to keep we're flexible we work around all people's schedules um you know, and, and, and things like that. And and that's a, and a big reason why, um, you know, it's so important to have recruits is you'll never know who someone's going to know. You know what I mean? You, you may bring, like, a lot of people, and, and, you know, I understand people have different focuses in the JCWA, different motives. Um, you know, people want to contribute ideas and people want to, you know, um, do this and, and do that. And, and I think no matter what, always remember that like a big thing that would help JCWA continue. See, cause it's not the ideas. We have plenty of those. Like I've been doing this shit since I was a little kid, you know, like I pretty much have ideas planned until the next year. So, you know, by the way, if anyone suggests anything to me and I don't use it, don't be, you know, offended you know, it doesn't necessarily mean I think it's a bad idea. It just means maybe I don't think it's right for what we're doing. And that's not where I want, you know, the storylines and stuff to go. But above all else, always remember that one of the biggest things to help you in the JCWA is recruiting. Because you can bring in somebody that is, you know, maybe, maybe they're not that, like, let, let's say this is a scenario where you bring someone that maybe not that great. And, you know, you never know, they might bring somebody that turns out to be great, you know, and things like that. And and I, when somebody brings in someone that does a good job, that reflects highly on you. If your recruit does well, you know, it, it makes you look better in our eyes because you're the one that brought this person in. You're the reason that they're involved. So it makes you look good. However, if they do bad... It doesn't reflect on you at all because that's not really your fault. You can only guide somebody so long. You can only, you you can tell somebody where to go. They're the ones that actually have to move their left foot and right foot and actually go. You know. Um. So that that's a big tip, Xavier. I don't know if you have any tips, but I have another one after you're done. Uh, another tip is dedication. Like, yeah. if you know you have this said date to be here or you said you was gonna come come like if you get in camera time show up like that's your time to shine yeah that, that's true and you know like i said before it, it's kind of a go hard or go home kind of thing you know at the end of the day i can't force anybody to show up that has to be on you guys so even though i'm running the storylines and putting the matches together and all that kind of stuff you guys more than me really controls your fate and your destiny here. You know, you could be the type of person that 
you know, it's around once in a while, maybe you kind of show up here and there. And, and you know, while, while that's fine and you can be here doing that, you know, you're not going to get the opportunities you may want that way. You know, just because why should I give it to you if somebody else, you know, is doing better? Now, if you're somebody that, you know, really, um, you know, puts yourself out there in the JCWA and you really want to help with recruiting and location scouting and things like that, because that's, that's the second most important thing, um, getting locations. But, you know, if, if we see also that you're really trying to do whatever you can to make the JCWA last, then, you know, you'll get the opportunities you deserve at some point. You know, sometimes you're not meant to get it right away. Sometimes you're going to have to wait for it. Sometimes you're going to have to lose, you know, and get beat up and all that kind of stuff. I remember one person, um, th this isn't anybody that's in the current roster, but, you know, they had kind of an issue with the fact that, you know, off the bat, they were going to get, like, attacked. Not even beat, like, attacked. And it kind of annoyed me because... You know, you got to look at it from my shoes. It's like, who are you? You know, like, like I said, like this, like, like you may, you come in and you may think, oh, I'm great. I, you know, did this in this park I did, or even I did this in a ring or whatever the case. That doesn't matter. Like the biggest thing that matters is attitude. You know, the attitude you have, the mindset, you know, um, how flexible you are, you know, and, and how willing, you know, are you to get the job done and follow the storylines and, you know, the directions and things like that. So when somebody off the back, you know, kind of gives me like a whole, you know, oh man, like, d d does it really have, you know, oh, I thought, you know, I thought it was going to go like this and this and that, like, well, you thought wrong. Because I, I, you know, the plans I may have for you may be different from what you think you deserve. And that's because by that point, you know, this is a guy that, you know, was just starting with us. He didn't de deserve shit. I don't care what success he found wherever. Like in the JCWA, you start, you start from the bottom in most cases. And that's, you know, why, like, that, that particular thing got me upset just because it's like... Look at it from my point of view. Why would I want to push somebody or even take somebody seriously if they can't follow simple instructions or they have an ego where, oh, you know, I don't want to, you know, look bad and, you know, get beat up. And I was hoping I could come in and beat everybody and win, you know, this match and that match and then go on to win the Rumble and then, you know, beat everything and have a fairy tale ending. It doesn't work like that. You have to work for it. You have to bust your ass for it. You know, once you've put in... And mind you, perfect example, Jalen Taylor, you know, when he first started in, in JCW in 2013, we didn't think much of him, honestly. He, you know, we were pretty much using his basement for the events. So, you know, it was just kind of like, all right, he comes with the location, I guess you could say. And that's really about it. He was on kind of a losing streak, not on purpose, but eventually that's what it became um, all throughout 2013. And then in 2014, because of all the work he put in and how much he busted his ass from, you know, uh, his his matches in 2013 to 2014, he, he wound up winning, you know, honestly, the best Rumble we've done to this day, which is JCWA Basin Rumble 2014, which, you know, was a big moment for him um and it was a big moment for jcwa too because we were able to really kind of make a new star in jalen in a way and that's what i want to do for a lot of people coming in but you're not just going to get a handout you know and it's not gonna come easy because there's other people more deserving of it than you are already fighting for things like that so you come in new you know having no accomplishments here, haven't really done anything here, like, you know, you're, you're starting from square one, um, so, yeah, because in all the 13 years of me wrestling and busting my ass here, I get, I'm getting the push I deserve, like, so, it's, it's not, you gotta put your ego in check, like, you gonna, you earn what you earn, 
Or which you are. Exactly. And, and that's just like, that's life, guys. You know, and anywhere you go, they don't care what you've done before you got to them. Like, in most cases, unless you're like, you know, a really famous wrestler or something, you know, other than that, like, it, it really doesn't matter because you're with a new group of people. You're supposed to be like, you're the one that's supposed to, in a way, impress them. You're the one that's supposed to prove yourself to them in a, in a way. You know what I mean? And prove to them that you deserve to be taken seriously, you know, in the JCWA. You're, you're one of the people, you know, that is going to make, I, I guess you could say, make a difference, you know? And we're not going to give that to you by you telling us that you're going to do that because talk is cheap. And words, most of the time, like, it's, some people, they don't back up what they say. So I can't take you saying, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna last this long, don't worry. I'm, I'm, and, then, you know, I want to do this and be this dedicated. I'm going to show up this amount of times for the... At the end of the day, that doesn't mean anything because you could still be the type of person that doesn't do any of that and was just talking out of their ass because that's what you thought we wanted to hear. In reality, no. I want to I want to hear the truth at all times, you know, because if I'm spending my time putting you in a storyline or a feud or involving you in the episodes or whatever, you know, like I want to make sure that you're worth the investment and the time that we're putting into you. So when somebody comes in for whatever reason and fucks up or doesn't last that long it, it, it it's it's annoying because you got to change storylines because of them you know you gotta you gotta you know write them out write them out of what's going on you know you have to you know if they if they were feuding with someone now you have to find someone else for them to feud with so you know it, it's this thing where i want to know up front what i'm getting i know that life is unpredictable and you never know like you can generally intend to be here for a while and then may have to move or you get sick or something happens where you can't do it and there is situations like that but for the most part like come in keep an open mind do what's being asked of you and i guarantee you that if you truly deserve what you think you deserve and if you you'll get it you know yeah. Because 2014, we had a general manager that we lost the whole season because he wasn't dedicated. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, uh, the, the infamous uh, JR, I guess you could say. Um, but, yeah, so you guys, um, and, you know, that's, of course, a, a topic for another day. Um, if you guys do want to see this um, continue, like I said, I, I would love to do uh, uh, an array of topics and and you know things of, things of that nature um and stuff like that uh if i can add anything else to new people coming in um you know li like i said try to bring people you know even new people that come in try to bring new people yourself because the one thing that keeps jc the, the only thing that really keeps jcwa alive is the fact that people participate. If people weren't participating, JCWA would have been dead by now. So it would have RIP'd in the ground. We, we've had gaps of not shooting absolutely anything. So JCWA has been dead a couple of times. JCWA was dead in 2015. We did one match that whole entire year. It was, it was in December, I believe. The only reason we did the match well, so we can say that we did a match in 2015. That was the um, Holiday Man Gauntlet match. And then in 2016, we didn't really do anything until towards the end when we started Platinum Season 3. So that doesn't really count much either because that wasn't that was only like near the end of the year 2017 is really like the first big year since 2014 where things are happening constantly you know and it's because we're getting be people our biggest season yet so if you want to join join if, you, if you're shy on camera just after a while you get used to it like if whether it's promos whether it's wrestling you'll get used to it. If you're not that good, you'll get help. Don't worry about sucking. Nobody's here to judge you. We're here to make you better. 
Exactly. Yeah, you're right about that. And, you know, it, it, even though it is, it would be good if you knew a little something coming in. If you don't, it's fine. If you don't, if you can't cut a promo to save your life, you don't know how to wrestle, you don't know anything, but you still really, really, really want to do this, we're willing to work with you. We're willing to work with you as long as you're willing to work with us and yourself. You know, and we'll teach you, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll practice with you, we'll, we'll help you out any way we can. And, you know, these are skills that may help you and you can apply outside of JCWA and Just Central Films. Like, let's say you want to, you know, be an actor or something like that. A lot of JCWA's purpose is, you know, the acting aspect of it and the improv and people being quick on their toes and, you know, quick in, in, in what they say um, you know, like, let's say if the person they're cutting a promo with kind of throws in a wrench that they weren't planning, you know, how quickly can you, you know, come up with something cool to respond to that? So yeah, there's no scripts involved. Yeah, you know, just, just really just kind of like a guideline. But for the most part, you know, it's, it's up to you to decide, you know, how your promos are going to be cut, the exact, you know, the way you're going to say the main points that you're supposed to talk about, how you get around to those main points. And you'll start to see, you know, a character of yours developing and, and you know, getting better and better. So, you know, any anything you don't know can be taught to you. So, you know, don't, don't use you thinking you're going to be bad. Uh, which I'm sure a lot of people use as an excuse not to do it if it's something you really want to do, you know, go for it and, you know, we'll work with you, um, you know, and then while you're here, just, you know, and, and thing, things are constantly moving, you know, and constantly changing and things like that, so, you know, what's interesting about the JCWA is rivalries change, um, you know, the storylines that like we, we have like a six, seven storylines going on right now. Cause I try to give something to everybody, you know, I try to give everybody something interesting to do. Um, you know, for example, we had just recently returned to season four, um, Joseph Montalvo and Keyshawn Donison, you know, and, and Joseph Montalvo really just did, um, JCWA showdown, you know, that's the, the rivalry with him and, Xavier going on right now is all about, um, you know, and, and Keyshawn that was in Showdown and uh, an episode of Wednesday Night Brawl and things like that, even though they don't have the the craziest track record, you know, I, I, I still want to involve them in interesting things because, you know, you never know, somebody could impress or somebody could kind of shock you that you wouldn't expect. You know, there's been there's been people that I that I didn't think would last like half as long as they did. You know, and then there's people that I thought would last longer than than they ended up lasting. So, you know, you it's it's hard to read people, and everybody's different. And you know, we can't just take your word for it in terms of oh, I'm going to be this dedicated. I'm gonna do you know, saying it is fine, but only if you can back it up. If you can back it up. And then we're willing to work with you. And we're willing to put time into your character and develop your character the right way. You know, um, Xavier Rodriguez here, he, um, you know, has done, um, I, I guess you could say, a lot of, like, backyard stuff um, before the JCWA. So he came in already kind of knowing a thing or two. But, you know, JCWA is in a lot of ways, especially with the, the promo cutting, you know, we, we've seen an improvement. Yeah, season season one, my promos were, were not as good as they are now. And I was healed like I am now. Yeah. Season two, yeah, that was just me being... Season two was just me being goofy. Like, season three, that's when... Midway through, that's when I started really feeling like the prodigy and really falling into things. But I'm even more into the... the, the the kinks of everything now. Yeah, and I think honestly we continue to get better um, as the years go on. We we honestly don't stop getting better. Like I I don't know how we do it. Um, and and you know like 
with JCWA, since it's such a complicated thing to explain to people, because um, that's another thing, too. I'm, I'm glad I remembered this. Because um, I feel that some people, and I'm not there to, like, witness it, but I have a feeling some people may not, when they tell a new person about JCWA, they may not say the right things um, to get them interested in joining. You know what I'm saying? Because at first glance, any person that looks at it would just be like, oh, these, you know, these are a couple of, you know, a couple of people wrestling in a hallway or something, you know, and that's, and, and that's all they know. They don't know nothing about it. But, you know, when you bring, when you're trying to bring somebody in, like, you have to, like, really kind of explain the, you know, what, in a way, what JCWA is about, um, you know, and things like that. Actually, when JCWA first started, it wasn't even supposed to, like, be this whole, you know, storylines and, you know, a bunch of events each year and things like that. Actually, when we first started the first JCWA event, which is Basement Rumble 2013, it was just going to be a Rumble a year. And that's legitimately how it was going to go. Just because we wanted to just wrestle. That was really it. So we were just kind of like, okay, we'll do a Rumble a year. No storylines attached or nothing. We'll, we'll have one match a year. But things got so interesting in the JCWA that it continued and it got better, you know. And, and mostly with, you know, the participation. Because, again, that's the, that's the biggest thing keeping JCWA alive is bringing people in. That's what makes JCWA healthy. So, you know, once that happened, that kind of gave JCWA a boost. And, you know, so far I feel things have been gotten better. And it's only going to continue to get better from here because we got a couple of plans. Some big stuff is coming. I'm not going to spoil it. But just know that there, there's something crazy that we have possibly planned after, you know, uh, um, Backyard Brawl. And, you know, some big stuff is going to happen. That's all I'm going to say about it. Um, Stay tuned. And if you're interested in being involved in it, then come. Yeah, be a part of it. But um, right quick, back to my old point. Some people might tell a recruit, yeah, like, oh, you know, these, oh, we, we do wrestling stuff in a hallway or something. You know, you want to join Then Nobody's going to want to join after just hearing that. You know, especially females, which, you know, would help you more obviously but the best thing to do is when you have a new recruit you know apart from showing them a couple of videos because even then they won't really see you know really behind the scenes and really what makes jcwa jcwa um really let them know that it's something here to help people um it's very it's big you know in terms of acting based and focused you know, so anyone that comes in that wants to do acting that maybe doesn't even really like wrestling, because we've had people come in, um, a few names, Frank Provenzano, Cesar Valderrama, Christopher Taveras, people that haven't really watched wrestling, but still did it, because it was fun, they enjoyed it, um, some people see it as an escape from life bullshit, some people, you know, just find it a blast to do the act of wrestling itself, but, you know, whatever the reason, we've always, you know, had people, and I've always tried to get people, you know, that wasn't really, like, backyard wrestler guys, because, you know, JCWA isn't necessarily a wrestling promotion, it's it's it's, it's more like a, a department for films and things like that, but it's just that JCWA is so popular that that's usually what we're doing, but, you know, let any new recruits coming in know that, you know, we do the acting stuff too, and there's there's benefits to this. We're not all just wrestling because of the hell of it or because we're bored. Like, you know, we're trying to help people. We're trying to have something interesting for people to watch online. You know, we're, we're, we, we know that, you know, people love just being involved and things like that. And, you know, just really go down the list of what makes JCWA not like any other wrestling promotion because again this isn't one this isn't a backyard fed we're not trying to be like wwe or anything like that like we're our own unique selves that's why we use real names that's why we wrestle in places that not many other places wrestle in and that's because i try to be unique original you know i don't want people to accidentally compare us 
to, you know, the next group because they do things similar to us. No, I want us to kind of do our own thing and have our own format and things like that. Um, and, you know, so far it, it's been going well and, you know, we've been getting more and more people coming in and that's exactly what the JCWA needs, like I said, more than anything. Um, so I guess to, like, wrap things up a, a bit, Xavier, how do you feel... Um, about the things we discussed in terms of, you know, what people need to tell their recruits and, you know, what recruits uh, should expect coming into this thing. I feel like, yeah, the, um, what people need to tell their recruits is that, yeah, we wrestle, but they're, like he's, like Joseph said, there's movies, they do minis, they do shorts, stuff like that. So, like, if wrestling is, you don't want to wrestle, you could just act. You could just be on screen as a persona or whatever. Yeah. And, and you know, in JCWA, you know, the, there's manager positions that we're considering trying to fill um, soon. We're trying to bring more managers into the mix because nobody has a manager right now. Um, you know, we can always use um, referees, uh, interviewers. Uh, you know, I guess people that just want to help out and things like that. So, you know, when we say join J, you know, when we say consider JCWA if you're interested, you know, we're not saying just saying if you want to wrestle, even though obviously that's the people that wrestle in it are going to get the opportunities, of course, because that's what the stories and that's what even though jcwa is not really a wrestling promotion it's revolved around the idea of wrestling that pushes that moves the stories along that um you know pushes the feuds along and honestly it's just really fun to do you know and and it's just it's just what we do you know we've been doing this since 2013 i didn't think it would last that long at all like i didn't think four years later you know, we'd be talking about JCWA and still coming up, you know, and still having events and things going on. But it goes to show you the power of, you know, participation, you know what I'm saying, and, and the power of passion. Because if people didn't, wasn't as passionate about it and, you know, didn't care as much about it as a good amount of the roster does, you know, JCWA would would be dead on life support, you know, like it needs that, it needs the passion and the participation and people showing up and, you know, you know, making sure that everyone shows up for their needed segments or matches or whatever, you know, like it's, it's, everyone needs to carry their own weight and everyone gets what they deserve, even if it's not immediately, it might not even be a year from now, but if you deserve it, and if you really, truly do, then you'll get it, you know, and, and and that's my thing, because, you know, some people, like I said, they come in, they expect maybe handouts, uh, or, you know, they think they're so special that, you know, they should do this and that, and it's not the case, you know, if that's the mindset you're going to have, this is not for you, and I suggest, like, just not even bothering, um, but if you're someone open-minded, if you're someone that understands the bigger picture and the longevity of decisions and, you know, things like that, then you'll fit right in. Everybody here is cool, you know, passionate, cool group of people that enjoys doing this. If you're cool too, you'll fit right at home. You'll get along with everybody, almost everybody, however, and, you know, it'll all work out. Um... But that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about for the first episode of the podcast. Again, it's kind of a new idea. Me and Xavier um, were discussing it um, the other day. I always kind of wanted to do one, but I never just did it. <laughs> so I decided to do it now. Anyone that's listening to this, um, let us know what you think. And if you want to see... And if you want to see more episodes, what do you want to... You know, what topics do you want covered? You know, should we talk a little bit more about the history of JCWA, should we talk about, like, like the bad, should we talk about the good, you know, the what we think was the best matches, or people, or year, or whatever the case, there's so many topics we could talk about that's not gonna fit, 
in this, you know, episode of this podcast, because then we'll be here talking forever. So, on that note, Xavier, is there anything else you'd like to say? You good? Yeah. All right, Xavier is good, and so am I. And folks, we'll catch y'all next time on JCWA Unauthorized. Take care.